call to order the City Council meeting of Thursday, September 13th, 2018. Please stand for Pledge of Allegiance and prayer. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, may we bow our heads, please. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful town that we live in. Thank you for all the things that you've given us. Special prayer for those who are in harm's way with Florence coming. We certainly know how that can happen with Sandy. You helped us through Sandy. Our community got together. You led the way, and we got back on our feet. Please put your healing hand in your hand of grace on the people in North South Carolina, Virginia, that you'll help them do the same thing and come through something that could be a tragedy. Hopefully it's avoided and hopefully you're in charge. We thank you for this ability to assemble. We thank you for this ability for us to get together. We also thank you for the veterans who sacrificed their lives, their limbs, and those who came home and those who could not make it home. Without them, we wouldn't have the freedom to assemble and for that, we're so eternally grateful. We also want to ask for prayers for the Caserta family. It's Joe Caserta, World War II hero, lost his, his most valuable partner in life, his wife. Without him, without her, she wouldn't, he wouldn't be the man he is today, and he's the first to admit it. So put a healing hand on that family to have pleasant reminders of what a great woman she was, an asset to our community. But may everything we say and do tonight be to your honor and glory. Amen. 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 Hey, Mr. Barr. Here. Ms. Bergman. Mr. DeFlieger. Present. Mr. Hartzell. Here. Mr. McClellan. Here. Mr. Wilson. Here. Mr. Madden. Here. Adequate notice of this meeting has been given pursuant to Public Law 1975, Chapter 231. A reminder to silence to turn off your cell phones. We're going to move into citizen comment since we've got a big crowd and we're starting off kind of a new year in the fall. I'm going to read the citizen comment, uh, regular meeting standing rules. In addition to citizen comment during the second reading of public hearing of proposed city ordinances, in addition to citizen comment during the public hearing and proposed resolutions on consent, your city council has opted to include citizen comment as a portion of the regular city council meeting. Citizen comment is offered during the first half hour of the meeting and again at the close of the meeting. Residents shall be given approximately five minutes to share their thoughts. The first 30 minutes is a courtesy provided to provide accommodation to citizens that do not want to wait until the end of the meeting or until a public hearing on an ordinance or non-consent resolution. If a citizen speaks during this time, permission will not be granted to speak again on the same issue at the end of the meeting. Upon recognition by the chair, speakers shall come to the podium and give their name and address for the record. All persons are expected to engage in respectful and orderly discourse. Persons entering into personal, impertinent, or slanderous discourse or persons who become boisterous or unruly during the discussion shall, at the discretion of the chair or the objection of city council members, forfeit the remaining time to address the city council. Statements to the city council or the administration should be addressed through the chair. A reply to a statement or question should not be the impetus for debate. Concerns that cannot be addressed immediately will be referred to their department head. So with that, uh, we're moving to citizen comment. Because of the number of people we have signed up, we're going to have three minutes for citizen comment at this portion of the meeting. So first is Stan. Yeah, I'm Stan Chalkowski. I live at 104 53rd Street. It would be hate between Haven and Simpson, and flooding has always been a problem there. And that's just a fact of life. Title and rain. I'm glad City Council is doing something with the ACT Engineering study, which hopefully uh, will help. Uh, Councilman Barr had a uh, board meeting where they did a presentation. Councilman Hartzell was there. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about ACT Engineering and some of the documents I've received. Uh, just to establish myself, uh, nothing worse than a retired guy, 38 years with the FAA. Uh, most of that time as a computer scientist. I managed high-tech uh, activities for controllers and also the application of GPS and precision navigation. Had 75 people and three different contracts working for me, and also several hundred hours of government contracting training. Okay, established some, some credibility. Uh, Act Engineering uh, appeared, uh, excuse me, spoke at the, count, at the ward meeting 
Um, not very definitive. They did ask, they did present some things. Uh, there was nothing written down. There were no uh, view graphs. And their senior person, once he was pressed, acknowledged that they would provide a report by the end of the year. So what I did is I filed an OPRA request through the clerk's office. Great response, got what I needed. And I'm a little bit dismayed about how we're contracting with ACT Engineering. There's nothing in that contract that has any dates in it, that has any activities in it. We don't know what we're getting. They're gonna write a report. I don't know what that looks like. One would hope that somebody would be reviewing an outline of that report and working with them. Uh, we're paying them a lot of money. The uh, senior person makes $192 an hour. I realize that's a loaded rate. I mean, I understand that. So he's, but he's still making a good salary, as are some of the other people. Uh, so what I would hope we get in future work and in this work is a better handle of what they're doing and what they're going to give us and not just hope for the, at the end of the contract that we'll get something that's useful. Thank you. Thank you. Marlene? Hi. My name is Marlene Shepard and I live at 103 East 15th Street in Ocean City. And just for full disclosure, between my mom, my brothers, my children, and myself, our family has lived for more than a total of a century in Ocean City. And during that time, I've seen some really good things and some bad things. But I'm not here tonight to address the overcrowding or the greed of developers or the flooding, which has made living here in Ocean City in the summer quite unbearable. I've come for other reasons. First, to thank our mayor for his brilliant stroke of genius in appointing Michael Hartman uh, to the Arts Council. And um, I want to thank you people for your public service because having been in the public sector for most of my professional life, I know that it's often a very thankless job. Uh, our mayor, by appointing Michael Hartman, he has brought our music peer back to life, and they have brought programs and shows there that have been enjoyed by many people of all ages. And I thank you, Council, for your efforts in encouraging and bringing the arts to Ocean City. I think it's really been wonderful, and I thank you. Um, recently, I spent time in Singapore. And like us, this island, Singapore is overcrowded. It has uh, many high-rise condominiums and, and their seasonal homes and rentals. But I was struck by the quality of life, which ranks much, much higher than the United States, third, as opposed to 46th. One can help noticing the open spaces on every single block. Spaces open to the air with benches, artworks, and places for the common person to just sit and breathe. I'd be hard pressed to name five or six places in Ocean City that are anything like that. Perhaps one of the reasons we have this, this problem is that we have a preponderance of realtors, developers, contractors, etc., on every important board. Now, I'm proposing to council tonight that they adopt a resolution that no more than three realtors, developers, contractors, etc., sit on any one of those boards. One only has to drive through our city streets to see what these boards have done to our city. Enough, enough of this nonsense. I've been told by council members, council members, Marlene, that- um, I apologize to stop you, but the three minutes to go off. Well, and I haven't spoken here for a while. Would and somebody I, give me their two minutes? <laughs> it's not negotiable. Yeah. Okay, we'll thank you. you. Okay, thank you. 
They tell me, Council, that these are the only qualified people Arlene, that can apply Arlene, for I'm, these boards. I'm sorry, but I'll be happy to talk to you. We'll be happy to talk to you afterwards. I was told I had five minutes, Council, and there's a half an hour. Now, I'm going to insist that okay. I be given five minutes. In the beginning of the meeting, I mentioned we have a lot of people to get through in the first half Okay, hour this young but woman has given me a minute. And I appreciate two that. Two minutes. But two she's given me two minutes. We'll be happy to talk to you afterwards. But we're going to work through everybody. Well, can I finish my two-minute statement, please? No. I think it kind of bothers you when I get to the point where I'm asking well, council to make an adoption. Mr. President, you have to get more, sir. I beg your pardon? Can you please sit down? Thank you. Okay. When can I have the two minutes? You may come up and speak about something different at the end of the meeting when we have another, when we have another public comment. Thank you, Maureen. Suzanne? And this is democracy at its best. <laughs> I'm Suzanne Hornick, and I'm at 30th and West, and you guys already know that I hate to do this, but for the people behind me, understand that I'm very nervous, so I'm just going to read what I wrote. I think most of us are angry and disillusioned with the city's handling of the worsening flooding on our island, which is damaging our homes, jeopardizing our health, and diminishing our quality of life. It is our city administration's responsibility to make a priority its residents' and taxpayers' health safety, as well as to protect our properties. You are you are asking to be allowed to spend a minimum of $9 million to purchase land and then an undisclosed amount for more lots in the area of 1600 Simpson Avenue. This will be followed, if approved, by spending millions more to build a new police station on that spot. Ocean City Flooding Committee vehemently opposes this. Do not vote to approve this. The city and the mayor clearly stated in his community meeting of August 2016 and many times before that the area of 26 to 34th Street between West and the Bay is the worst area of flooding on the island and vowed to fix it. The mayor showed off the project by Baker International that promised it would greatly improve flooding in this area and stated the project will be done by Memorial Day 2017. Now the project is currently a year and a half behind schedule with no end in sight and the flooding is worse than ever. Worse yet, the city, after much fanfare about this 26 to 34 Street project, quietly took a portion, a large portion of the project out for lack of funds, much to the disappointment of the residents and taxpayers who were promised relief. We ask that the project be restored to its original plan and include the original streets. The city then undertook several other flooding remediation projects, totaling many millions of dollars, which are also incomplete, as well as other products like projects like new air conditioning, in the bathrooms on 6th Street, expanding the boardwalk, dozens of new benches outside the mayor's businesses, putting money into the life-saving station, over a million on an artificial turf field, and tens of thousands of dollars into the Ocean City Theater Company, plus more expenses. While these things are important, it should be our highest priority to remediate our flooding island-wide, not make empty promises and then spend our money on things you think are nice to have, while hundreds of homes are being destroyed by the flooding. People's health and safety are being put at risk. People are losing thousands of dollars a month here on lost rental income, and merchants are losing income because of that. People have gotten sick and lost property because of this flooding. Our tax dollars are not infinite, and the city, and this city and our city council need to prioritize your spending of our money. It's called fiscal responsibility. Moreover, that area of Simpson already floods, and building on and reducing the pervious surface even more will only exacerbate the flooding. This will, without a doubt, damage the surrounding homes. An attorney has advised us that anything built by the city which causes damage to people's properties may make the city vulnerable to a takings claim, that's in quotes, compensatory lawsuit. That could potentially reach Thank millions you. of dollars Sorry. and nobody wants that. We, got it work on we don't want the down. police station. Thank you. Jackie? Hello, how are you this evening? Good, how are you? Um, it's been two years since I've been here. Uh, for personal reasons, I haven't been able to uh, get to these meetings. But um, I wanted to speak to some of the issues of the flooding as well. Um, I'm at 5009 Haven Avenue. There's been some work done at that corner. Um, but, it, but it doesn't seem to have helped the situation. And I, I'm, I'm really curious to know what is the follow-up? I mean, you spend this money, work is done, 
And then what happens? Is there any accountability for it? Who, is, who monitors the progress? Who's taking care of the fact that the money's spent, but it's not working? Um, it, it looks impressive. I, I went out into the wetlands and I saw the pipes and the big pipes and it looks very impressive. But nonetheless, um, I had water in my crawl space. I just spent $5,000 because of all the moisture that's under there. And yet, I'm still getting the same problem. So I, I would hope that um, as this money is being spent, that you will follow through and find out why it's not working. And aside from all that, um, I would like to thank and acknowledge Susan for, Suzanne for all the work that she's been doing. Um, I may not always agree with what she says all the time, but I absolutely think she's been done a marvelous job in attempting to educate all of us on some of these issues um, about flooding and the climate change and all of that and the effects that it's having on all of us. And I would like to see that the council do more and put more effort into educating us as citizens and taxpayers on how what we can all do to solve some of these problems. And just know that it's a big problem, obviously, and we all need to pitch in. But, but if we don't know what we're fighting and what we're dealing with, you know, you can put a couple pipes in here and you can do a little bit of this and of that. But unless we really deal with what our big problem is and what other states are doing, what other communities are doing, and we just can't just keep do, throwing Band-Aids at it. It's a bigger problem. And so I would like to see us try to approach it from that angle. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Steve, Steve, please. Hi, I'm Dave Hayes from 641 Battersea. I'm a year-round resident. And tonight I'm gonna to talk about the real estate sign ordinance, that's ordinance 4-39. So this ordinance was written in 2005, and it was written at a time when signs were becoming a problem, okay? Um, and I'll just, I'll just pull some things out of there. It says, proliferation of signs has resulted in visual pollution. It says, other, it talks about other signs from contractors, subcontractors, lending institution, and architects, and its summary is, it's in the best interest of Ocean City to regulate signs. And it has big fines of up to $1,250 for each violation and or imprisonment not to exceed 30 days. So every day it could be a separate violation. So um, previous administration, they enforced the ordinance and signs really weren't an issue. With the current administration, they're choosing not to enforce the ordinance and signs have gradually gotten to the worst where we're st worse to the point where we're starting to look like Wildwood. Uh, then right after the election, um, this advertisement popped up. Dorothy Phillips, Berkshire Hathaway, lights up the night. And ads started showing up in the papers at the end of May uh, that were advertising that. Here's some examples of her signs. These signs are perpendicular to the house and to the, and to the street. They uh, sit in the dog patch, which is city property. They're lit up with solar-powered lights. And a lot of them are leaning over the curb so that you can't, if you park a car there, you can't even open your door. Uh, I filed a complaint in July and was uh, finally told that the ordinance is under review by the administration. Um, actually, it's been under review for years. So that's code for we're going to enforce the ordinance depending on who it is, and it certainly isn't you. Uh, so the city's incredibly picky about what can go into the dog patches we know. No shrubs, no trees, no plants over 12 inches in height, no river rocks, no crushed shells, no sand, and certainly no signs. Um, my friend put a small sign on the dog patch in it, and it said it asked the owners to curb their dog because she had azalea plants that um, spent $3,000 on the plants, and they were all ruined by dogs going to the bathroom on them. So she was immediately told by the city to take her sign down within seven days or she'd be fine. So these are the points I'd like to close with, three points. It's not the right of the city, it's not right for the city to be threatening homeowners with fines over curb your dog signs but letting lighted real estate signs uh, exist without impunity. Um, and to me, what's next, I say digital signs. We're gonna see digital signs. So there's lighted digital signs. I know that Ken told me there's, Ken Jones told me there's ordinance against it. 
And it's like, but we aren't enforcing, so that's next. Um, it's unfair to the taxpayers not to provide the city services that we're all paying for. So in, in conclusion, do your job and represent the taxpayers. My name is Marie Hayes. My husband and I live here year round and we live at 641 Battersea Road. I am speaking tonight on the $9 million bond ordinance. What is happening here is that the city government is asking for $9 million to pay for real estate. You won't even tell us what it's going to be used for. If I went to the bank and asked for a $9 million loan, the bank would ask me what it was for. And if I replied, I don't know and I don't want to tell you, the bank would laugh at me. But we, the taxpayers, are the bank, and you're asking us to give you the money. I am pretty sure that you wouldn't be spending the exorbitant $9 million just for open space. A new police, police station probably won't go there because of all the flooding. My guess is that whatever would go there is something controversial, or you would have already been talking about it. Maybe affordable housing? I don't know. We don't know. Be transparent to the taxpayers with your plans. I again ask everyone on city council to please remember who you are representing and who voted you into office. It is not the city government you should be answering to, but to us, the taxpayers. The city should not be in the business of real estate speculation with our taxpayer money, and we don't want to pay for this. Thank you. Thank you. They breed in 114, Victoria Lane, uh, Marion Park. Why not one item on the agenda before we get to the heart of the matter tonight? That is resolution number nine, a change order for the Sixth Street restrooms. As I said for the past year, I support the restrooms. Um, we need restrooms on the boardwalk. You can never have enough restrooms on the boardwalk. Uh, with this change order, this will bring the cost of the actual building to eight, $808,000 plus the $435,000 platform, $15,000 to move a pole, $30,000 for professional services. We have a restroom of $1.3 million at 6th Street. Again, I support the concept. Um, when we build the restroom at 11th Street this winter, hopefully we'll take into account some of the um, errors we made with this one and maybe make some planning design changes. Um, I'm just quoting from the articles from the paper. According to Bergen, public information officer, the new 6th Street restroom will serve as a prototype for a permanent restroom facility at 11th Street. He said that project has been budgeted for 2019. That tells me it will be built in 2019 and ready for the summer season of 2019. Hopefully on the next agenda, we'll see some resolutions for professional services to move that project forward. Now the $9 million bond ordinance for the purchase of a land parcel, 1600 block of Simpson Haven. Again, it's hard to support or not, not knowing the exact use. Council went out for a professional service contract in July with McLeese Architecture for a, a concept design of the public safety building at that location. I was wondering if the city has received the results of those studies back. I'm sure you can hear a lot more about this tonight, but some of the things I like to comment on real quickly I agree that whenever you appraise a property, it should be for the highest and best use, but the highest best permitted use. Um, this whole process should have been through the purchasing office. Um, whenever you deal with local public contract law, whether it's an RFP or a contract, the same amount of information goes to every person. Different information doesn't go to different vendors or, or bidders. That was an error on the city's part. The same exact information should go to everybody. If there's questions, everybody gets a copy of the answer. This time last year, we were debating 50 Tennessee Avenue. We all remember that, the best deal ever, deal of the century. <laughs> Two council persons, and I congratulate them, hearts on bar, uh, withstood the pressure and voted no on that. There was a lot of debate on it. Um, city did not buy it, but the property was purchased July of 2018, not for $700,000, but for $350,000. Paint me suspect when it comes to appraisals the city gets. Thank you. Thank you. Don?
Donna Moore, um, Ocean <laughs> Avenue. Okay, first reason, um, I'm going to help um, this lady and zoning board. Okay, I've been attending zoning board meetings and I know that the zoning board is appointed by council. Thank you for your appointments to the zoning board, but the zoning board is passing every permeable land decrease variance. And I have witnessed two passages on Central Avenue, which is the crest of the island in the southern end, and all of the drains run down to West Avenue. And you can see evidence of the debris collected at the drains in Osbury and West. And this is from the yes votes for variances. No permeable surface on the crest drains all of their water down to the people experiencing flooding. You guys are responsible for the zoning board. Okay, Marie, um, affordable housing. Last meeting, what, um, a resolution, which the resolutions weren't read, was passed for the taxpayers to pick up the shortfall on expenses for affordable housing. What does this mean for the $9 million land purchase? Okay, now, table, um, 18, 1810 tonight, do not vote on ordinance 1810. Have a public meeting because right now, three minutes for the few people who get to speak here is not a public meeting. And resolution number three, up for vote tonight, tree replacement on Haven Avenue between 20th and 24th Streets. Where are the tree replacement plans? Where's the resolution for the 52nd Street trees? And to leave you with an important fact, the trees that were cut at 52nd Street, a mature cedar absorbs 30 gallons of water per day, which is a great flooding remediation tree along that border. So if anything goes back in along 52nd Street, it should be cedars, this replace the cedars that were cut. Thank you. Table, 1810. Thank you, Don. Michael. I'll wait for she catches up, my Hinchman, 281 West Atlantic Boulevard. In the strongest possible terms, I'm going to say tonight to you that the two appraisals commissioned by the city of Ocean City were illegitimate, practically fraudulent, and if you use them, it's white collar crime. I'm here tonight to explain the two appraisals and their fallacies, poor assumptions, and the fact that they're completely not worth the paper they're written on. I'm going to refer to it as a higher appraisal and the lower appraisal. The higher appraisal used comparable sales, and that's the correct thing to do. They, however, did not use comparable sales. You have to read the appraisal to see that. They used lots on Asbury Avenue, 42nd Street, as a comparable to something seven or eight blocks back, and they did a 5% adjustment. They used a property on East Atlantic Boulevard, a duplex property, where each floor is $900,000, a million dollars a floor. This is a 20% adjustment, okay? The second appraisal, the higher one, doesn't use proper comparable sales. The fallacy of these appraisals is, the fallacy of the lower appraisal is the following, as well as for the higher one. When you buy 30 lots as a developer, you get a bulk discount of 10, 15, 20%. Nowhere is that reflected in the appraisal. When you buy 30 lots, you have a carrying cost while you sell 10 lots a year. Nowhere is that reflected on either appraisal. The lower appraisal doesn't have any kind of cost for demolition or cost to get it approved. 
$855,000. This is a fraud. This is a fraud in the most naked sense of how you value property. And I will go to the FBI. I've already gone to the FBI. I'm going to go to uh, community affairs and so forth. This is a fraud. You did not appraise property. This, that's right. It's a fraud. It's a subtle fraud. Mr. Mr. President, please. He's, um, not, he's not allowed to address her in that manner. Okay. No matter what. This is a fraud on the city of Ocean City and its taxpayers. Okay. And it has to do with the fact that I asked you guys many, many times to form a capital expenditures committee because you know what? Whether you guys read the appraisals or not, you didn't even understand them because you're not qualified. I'm pulling solar panels on my shopping center. I know I'm a babe in the woods, but I got to find people who are smarter than me. You guys are not qualified to do this. These properties are worth $6 million, $6.3 million at most. And you're going to pay $9 million? This is a fraud. These appraisals were not done properly, okay? They're not done properly, and no one up here is qualified. You're going to tell me that a, a, a lot seven blocks back compared to Asbury Avenue is a 5% difference in value. Thank you. That's what these appraisals say. Thank you. It's a fraud. Thank you. That concludes citizen comments. I'm going to move into an approval of minutes. I have a motion to adopt the regular city council meeting minutes of and Thursday, August 23rd. Michael, you can't, you can't. You're done. I have a motion to adopt the regular city council meeting minutes of Thursday, August 23rd, 2018. So moved. Second. All right, Mr. Barr. Yes. Ms. Bergman. Yes. Mr. Deflieger. Yes. Mr. Hartzell. Yes. Mr. McClellan. Yes. Mr. Wilson. Yes. Mr. Madden. Yes. <laughs> Moving to reports from the mayor and the administration. Any reports? Reports. We're going to move into reports from city council. Bob, you want to start? Nothing at this time. Antoine? Nothing reports, sir. Keith? Yes, Mr. President. Just, just a quick comment. No problem. When it comes to public comment, I, I've been here the longest. Um, it's uh, the job of the president's most difficult job that you have. Um, you have to make decisions on people that you, that you like. Um, and sometimes ask them to follow rules. <clears throat> Originally, most city councils have a um, public comment section at the end of council. Previous council decided to put 30 minutes on the beginning of, of, of the council meeting. So most, most municipalities do not have, as far as I know, mm -hmm. Mrs. McCross, and I don't know if you have any knowledge of that. We allow 30 minutes for that, so what the council president does is he takes the amount of comments he has and he divides it into 30 minutes and he announces that at that time period. And then he does everything in his power, the best that he can, control to that three minutes. When you don't control to the three minutes, what happens is, what just happens to the last person to talk? Things escalate to the point that the person was escorted out by the police. Um, again, tempers flare, emotions flare. Hey, uh, hey. And, 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 these, and, and, these, and these things happen. Uh, it's, it's a tough job, and we, we need a decorum where we could stick to, to the three minutes. So I'll give everybody a hint that will make it easy on everybody. If there's a lot of people speaking, you have a second shot at the end of the meeting. Generally, not many people speak at the end of the meeting. So if you need five minutes, remove your name and wait. Now, the reason why we did a 30 minute in the beginning is because we figure most people don't want to sit through the meeting. So a long time ago, somebody said, okay, we're going to put 30 minutes up front, but then we'll have, again, comment at the end. And that's why we say you can't comment twice on the same topic. So just as a side, you know, if you think you're, you're going to go more than the three minutes, generally speaking, you'll have five minutes at the end. Hopefully that helps everybody. So if you feel like you want to speak for five minutes, you'll have a shot at it as opposed to the council president trying to control it to three minutes. And I can tell you, I've sat in that chair, how difficult it is. You don't like to, you don't like to stop somebody from speaking. Uh, so a lot of times they're right in their sweet spot when they're speaking and we get that and you try to get them to wrap up. It's not an easy job and I'd, I'd be remiss if I didn't say anything because um, certainly all of you that got up had important things to say, you did. Um, and it's a tough job to do that. And I just wanted to add in that bit of history. Um, we're a small community. We all need to get along with one another and be civil with one another. And, and, and we, we can all work on that and do better. But hopefully that helps people understand why we forced the three minutes in the beginning 
and when you may be able to have more time to speak uh, when you think it's appropriate to speak that length of time. Um, I'm sorry, Mr. President, but I just felt like every once in a while I'm the historian and have to kind of give a little bit of the, of the backstory of how things kind of developed. No problem. Thanks, Thank you. You're welcome. Mike? Uh, I have no comment this time. Yeah. Uh, we had a tourism meeting today. We talked about the summer. We talked about, um, you know, things that we could do when, you know, to the weather <coughs> influenced a lot of vacationers this summer, the weather reports. In Commentation City, we discussed different ways that we can, with our app, alert people. Instead of saying it's 80% chance of rain, it's or 20% chance of rain, it's 80% chance of sunshine, and different things like that. We also discussed our budget, and we're going to just look at um, different ways to to bulk up our budget for next year, so that we can really come on strong. You want to add anything to that, Pete? No. Pretty much sums it up. All right. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Tony, any reports? I have no reports at this time, Mr. President. Sir. Mr. President? Yes. I, I did forget one thing. Yeah. Uh, and I'll put it out now for those people who are watching that might, uh, might have to scare you off for something on Saturday. We have the air show this weekend. And if you've never been to it, it's great. Uh, back at the airport, uh, throughout the day, all kinds of planes and, and activities for kids. And it's just a really good time. Um, Saturday night, we have a skydiver, which is incredibly impressive if you were there last year. The pyrotechnics, these guys are out of their minds to do it, but it's really cool to watch. It's a great spectacle on the boardwalk. And then Sunday, they also do a, uh, a dive. So they're doing three dives, uh, skydives, uh, Saturday afternoon, Saturday evening, and Sunday. And it's something to really check out if you've, if you've never seen it before. That's all. Thanks, Mike. I have a motion to uh, introduce Ordinance 1811 on third reading. So moved. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Ms. Bergman? Yes. Mr. Flieger? Yes. Mr. Hartzell? Yes. Mr. McClellan? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Mr. Madden? Yes. 18-11, an ordinance of the City of Ocean City, County of Cape May, New Jersey, authorizing the acquisition by purchase or condemnation of 1, 109 16th Street, Block 1506, Lot 1, 2, 1600 Haven Avenue, Block 1606, Lot 3, and three, 1640 Haven Avenue, Block 1606, Lot 5. Explanation by the administration. As the title of the ordinance indicates, this ordinance would authorize the acquisition of the properties named in the title by either purchase or condemnation. Um, this is the very first step that the city takes in acquiring a property. We don't have the appraisals back on this, these properties yet. These three properties would complete the block that the Clause Enterprises lots are in. Um, we've had conversations with the owners, uh, with the owner of um, Block 1606, Lot 3, and 1506, Lot 1. His, um, that's Mr. Flood. He's indicated he does want to sell to the city. We do want to buy from him. We don't know if we'll come to an agreement on price. If we're unable to do so, then the next step would be to go to condemnation and allow the court to determine the fair and just compensation for the pro property. And Mr. Flood is agreeable to that process. Um, the other one is a very small lot, lot 1606, I'm sorry, block 1606, lot five. That's the Palermo family lot. We've been in touch with them as well. They're getting appraisals. We're getting appraisals. If we can negotiate a price, that's fine. Otherwise, we'll, uh, the administration will be coming to you for authorization to move forward with condemnation. So. You don't see a price listed for these lots because we, we don't have a price yet. Um, it will go through the usual process of appraisal and then we'll bring the price to you and you'll decide whether uh, it's, it's, a, it's something you want to vote for the city to acquire. Thanks, Donald. Any questions from the council, Bob? Um, no, you answered all my questions during the week as did Mr. McGraw. Thank you. Angel? Okay, Mr. President, sir. Uh, Mrs. Cross, I think this is a great uh, first step. Um, the available space, uh, both with what we're going to look at in the second reading, uh, the second reading um, tonight, as well as this space, is important. I think people spoke over and over again about the island being overdeveloped. Um, I know people are saying that we they don't know what we're going to do with the property, um, which there's been four or five firm things that we've all set up here, but I believe any development that we do there. Uh, we'll have more remediation for flood because currently, and I'll use this word again because Mr. Tobigla had a kick out of it, 
uh, there's solid macadam there now. So anything that we would build there now uh, would go under all of our pervious and non-pervious coverages and rules, which means we could do nothing but improve it. We, we can't go backwards because it's 100% covered with macadam, um, which is actually a central Pennsylvania saying, not an old person saying, but I'm old. Um, so when I look at it from that standpoint, um, from the funding standpoint, I just want to make sure that people understand that. We can only, we can only get better, not worse on this. And I know if we put something there, I, I really feel strongly that there'll be extra thought um, concerning that. Uh, I really do, and I think that will be in the plans, and I think all of us up here will ask for that. You know, if we're gonna, we're gonna put something there, I think all of us are gonna say, wait a minute, can, can we make sure we do the best we can, um, you know, to prevent flooding, flooding that area for a number of reasons. If it ends up police station, it would be very effective if it was flooded. So we're gonna have to take that into concern. Um, if it goes to any other public use or public good, in a lot of cases, most of those public good and public uses that have been discussed up here would certainly have even more pervious coverage. So we have no place to go but up on this. And you have to start here to find out the rest of it. So uh, I say uh, thanks very much for the first step. And um, let's go with it. Mike? If you went to 10 people under 40 on the street and asked them what McAdam was, <laughs> they'll probably say a wine. Um, Central Pennsylvania, they know the answer. You see blacktop, all 10 on them. Anyway, um, I, I suppose that uh, 1810 is certainly going to affect 1811. Um, the, the, us moving on one is going to affect the appraisals on the other. But, um, you know, it's not going to be worth any less if we, if we purchase the other property at that, at that price. But, you know, at the same time, I think fair is fair. Um, I think there are more factors here than some of our earlier speakers uh, alluded to. I, I don't think that the equation is quite as easy as was uh, presented. So um, I, I, I think this is well a good thing to explore, and we should we should do it. Thanks, Mike. Karen. Um, I agree with the, a lot of what Mr. Hartzell said, and I also agree with that it makes sense. We're, um, it, it makes sense according to 1810. It makes sense to complete the whole piece of property. It makes sense, I think it's a benefit for the city. I've talked to a lot of people and they're excited about us acquiring this, um, especially with the, the various things that are on the table that we might use it at. Um, they, they'd rather see the city have that than it get in the hands of a developer and they develop, I don't know, how many properties can they put there, 30? I mean, everybody, does, most people do not want to see that. So I'm excited to move forward with this. I'm excited to, to look at this and to make this whole block complete. So thank you. Thanks, Karen. Tony? I have no comment. I'm ready to move forward with this at first reading. We'll uh, put some information from the general public between uh, first reading and second reading, and uh, well, way back in there. Great. Right. Have a motion to adopt ordinance 1811 on first reading. And so moved. Second. Okay, Mr. Barr. Yes. Ms. Bergman. Yes. Mr. DeFlieger. Yes. Mr. Hartzell. Yes. Mr. McClellan. Yes. Mr. Wilson. Yes. Mr. Madden. Yes. Second reading and public hearing will be held on September 27, 2018, and will be published according to law. Ordinance uh, 1810 for second reading. Can I have a motion to take up ordinance 1810 on second reading and public hearing? So moved. Second. Okay, Mr. Barr. Yes. Ms. Bergman. Yes. Mr. DeFlieger. Yes. Mr. Hartzell. Yes. Mr. McClellan. Yes. Mr. Wilson. Yes. Mr. Madden. Yes. Number 1810, a bond ordinance providing for acquisition of property in and by the City of Ocean City and the County of Cape May, New Jersey, appropriating $9 million, therefore, and authorizing the issuance of $8,550,000 bonds or notes of the city to finance part of the cost thereof. Explanation by the administration. So this ordinance is before you for second reading and public hearing to appropriate, to authorize the acquisition of the properties and to set in place the bonds that will finance the purchase. And I'd like to give you some background as to how we got to tonight with respect to this ordinance. As council may recall, the Owners of this property and the prop properties, most of the properties, which were the subject of the prior ordinance, have the court-ordered ability to develop coastal cottages on what we think of as the car dealership lot. And they had a plan for 44 coastal cottages. Mm -hmm. The 
partnership between and among the owners fell apart at, at one point. And the Claus family, Claus Enterprises, came to the city and said, we will sell you this property, we will forego the development that we can do independently where they could fit, they believe, I believe, 30 homes. But the price is $9 million. So the question became, is that a reasonable price? They had come to the city once previously and asked more money, and it was less advantageous zoning. And the city did not go through this process of getting appraisals because it was clear that we could never reach their price, and we agreed not to move forward. When, when they came this time, we reviewed comparable sales just not in the way an appraiser would do so, but just looked at the comparable sales of properties at Coastal Cottages and at the Peter Lumber single family homes that were developed and got the general notion that this time it's possible they were asking for a price that the city would find to be reasonable. I reached out to appraisers. They gave us a very short deadline. They told us that this was the price. It was not going to be less than that. They gave us a sh very short window within which to respond to their offer. I contacted appraisers and asked them, these appraisals are very expensive. They're over $6,000 per report, and we had a short window. So I initially said to the appraisers, give me a verbal as to whether we should even move forward with the written appraisal. We don't know if we can come anywhere close to their asking price. And I, I told them the information that I had and the reason that I even thought we should move forward to request the appraisals, which was publicly available information regarding the coastal cottages that had been developed and sold and the single family homes that had been developed and sold on the Peter Lumber site. We got a verbal back that it's in the ballpark. We don't know if it'll be $9 million. We don't know if it'll be $8 million. We don't know if it'll be more than $9 million, but it's in the ballpark and it was worth moving forward with the additional expense to have reports prepared. We did that and you got, we got the reports that, that our, Mr. Hinchman gave you pages from tonight. When we got those reports, it was clear that the difference in the appraisals was more than 10%. So I started to pursue the third appraisal report that our ordinances mandate. It's having a difficult time getting a decent price for, for a comprehensive appraisal by an MAI who did not have a conflict with the city and had the time to do the report. And in doing so, was reviewing the reports and realized that one of the reports had too many units in it. The hypothetical assumption based on drawings that professionals for the seller had given us indicated that 29 coastal cottages could be constructed plus one home down by the 17th and Haven corner of the property for a total of 30 units. The higher appraisal actually appraised 30 coastal cottages plus the one single. So I contacted the appraiser and said, I think you've got too many units. Would you please rework the numbers and give me an amendment to the appraisal? I received an amendment to the appraisal report, which he called a market value appraisal addendum, dated May 11th, 2018. And with the reduction of one coastal cottage, the price came down to $9 million. Now, I'm not saying that that is the correct number. I'm not an appraiser. That's the professional opinion of this experienced licensed appraiser. And the only reason that that was particularly significant at that point is because it meant we didn't need a third appraisal. We were now within 10%, and I could take these appraisers, appraisals to the governing body for your consideration. So that's where we are. Mr. Hinchman was not given this letter because it was overlooked when he did his OPA request asking for the appraisal report. So I will provide this letter to him. I realized the oversight yesterday after I read the Sentinel Ledger and I thought, no, it's not more than a 10% variance. I know that. And I went back into my file to find out what had happened. The property is not being slated for the use as affordable housing. The concept for acquiring the property in the first place was to eliminate the possibility that it would be developed for housing and eliminate that density for 
the city as a whole, certainly, but for the neighbors who had spoken strongly that they did not want to see coastal cottages developed at that site. So as we've said in prior meetings, the intention is to put the property to a, a municipal use. It's been looked at as a police department. That's not a secret. You have approved a feasibility study by an architect, and we told you that we're looking at it as a police department. The primary purpose of that review was to investigate the condition of the building. That report has been received, and it was favorable enough that the mayor and Mr. Savastano, who, as you know, is a professional engineer, decided to move forward with the acquisition. We've also done environmental investigation of the property. We do not have the final reports back. We've done extensive uh, environmental reports. And I've got a report from our environmental consultant indicating that there's some minor groundwater involvement, which may very well just be the result of the historic fill put on the property. As much of the island was filled with bay material, so was this property. So we do not yet have the results to see whether there's some kind of contamination based on the prior use of the property or if it's just historic fill. GEI, our environmental consultants, has given us a range of between $25,000 and $200,000 to deal with whatever the results will be, and we expect to have those results on Monday. The seller has already agreed to put in escrow a sum sufficient to cover whatever contingency it is $200,000 would be the most, and we would certainly ask them for slightly more than that if that was the um, condition that we found. And that would require both the groundwater and the ground soils to be contaminated, which is not what she expects, but she's, she's given us in her report and her estimate worst case scenario. So we've got, although we don't have those results back yet, we do have a means to address whatever results we get at the expense of the seller. So we're, we're now, this ordinance is now before you. Um, the administration has brought it to you, giving you the information that we have for you to decide whether it's worth the $9 million. It was not a price that was negotiated in the traditional sense that a number was provided and then countered. This family came forward and said, this is what we will accept to sell this property to the city. We believe that if we develop the property, we could make more money and create a greater profit, but we believe that this property should be owned by the city. We inherited it from our grandmother. We believe she would think that the property should be in the hands of the city. So that's, that's how they came to the city. That was their price. If, if you feel that it's not worth $9 million in this, it's, it's entirely up, up to you. You can vote on this any way you want, of course, now. The mayor would point out that this would create, connect a public corridor from Palmer Field through the intermediate school. And that's what attracted him to this property to begin with. The use, of course, is important. And the way the mayor conducts things, I have no doubt that there'll be some sort of a public forum to collect ideas from the citizens as to what will go there. But at this point, I think the focus should be on the location of the property and what you think the value is to the city. And I can assure you, I'm not sure what Mr. Hinchman was talking about, who would benefit from um, the kind of activity that he alluded to. But I can unequivocally deny that anything happened other than what I've just explained to you. And I'm certainly happy to answer any questions that you or any of the public may have on this. Thank you, Dad. All right, we're going to open up up to public comment. Public comment is on this ordinance only, and if you've already spoken about this ordinance, we appreciate you not coming up again. So we're going to go to this side of the room for public comment. Guy, come on up, sir. Robert Foreman, 2300 West Avenue, Ocean City, of course. I uh, just want to make a few statements in terms of I can see the pros and cons of purchasing the property versus not purchasing the property. Certainly, I believe the city of Ocean City has been overbuilt. 
my concern is becoming that we are trying to make up for all of the sins of the past administrations with the boardwalk, the dredging, the infrastructure, uh, the, so, the uh, drainage, and so forth. I'm concerned uh, from experience, not on this personal matter, but every problem you solve seems to lead to a new problem. I'm concerned that as being brought up about 50th Street, about the current uh, continued flooding that takes place uh, between uh, Haven and Simpson at 28th to 33rd, the new places going in and so forth, that we're spending money that's not really gonna pay off. So it's just, I'm at a point in life where I can't freeze my property taxes because I don't fall into that category. But, and of course, the Congress has seen fit to prevent me from writing off property taxes above a certain level. So from a personal standpoint, it's a bit of a pinch. Uh, I understand there's a lot of out comments out there on Facebook saying, great idea, love to stop uh, the building. I can understand that. Uh, I'm just offering the counter view of, uh, I'd like to see us slow down on all the money we're spending. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from this side of the room on this ordinance only? Okay, come on. Am I back? Yeah. Uh, yep, come on up. Yes. Yep. I'm sorry I'm not familiar with all the rules that change the last couple of times I've been here. Um, Mayor Gillian, I'm sorry that you came in late because I did applaud so many of your efforts. And uh, recently you stated that you didn't want to see this property that we're discussing tonight uh, with more housing. I absolutely agree with you. And it, oh, I was talking to the mayor, I'm sorry. That's why okay. I read everything. That's why I'm sorry. Uh, boy, I'm really screwing up tonight. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> um, anybody that has ever lived in Ocean City for any length of time remembers that every time it rained, there was an SOS put out by the car dealers, please, please come and move the cars because they're all being flooded. That area is one of the worst flooded areas in Ocean City. The other day I looked out my third floor window and that was a complete lake, okay? I can't see how in the world they're gonna put a two-story building on a lake. Forgive me, perhaps I'm not an architect, but that place for the 40 years that I've owned a property facing that has been flooded. It is a terrible, terrible area. So I love your idea, sorry, uh, that you wanna, you're thinking about making a corridor, a beautiful commons. Hey, listen, why don't we think about developing an Ocean City commons, much like Boston? You know, uh, we can make that place a pond, okay? We can have beach, uh, benches and artwork and we would have the area, of course you're not gonna get any money, but look at the legacy that you're gonna leave, your, kill, your children, okay? Let's, have, let's think about long range. Let's not develop it. It's not the place for a police station. You can build a police station across the street from where you have it now. You own the property. We won't have to go out for all this money. I agree with the nine million, buy it, let the city keep it. Okay, the Palmer family had it wonderful. Okay, let's make it a real ocean city tradition. Let's do something great for this city. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, yes. Yeah, yeah I'm Stan Shalkowski, 104 53rd Street. Um, I'm a little distressed that we're gonna spend $9 million and we don't know what we're gonna use it for. I think that's, there's been some studies in that, but we're gonna spend the $9 million. Um, whether that appraisal is right or not, I'm not an expert. Uh, the other thing is the remediation of the site. $25,000 seems awfully low. I had to get an uh, oil tank pulled in North Jersey and spent nearly that much just in a small backyard. So I think we got a lot of potential pollution problems there and how much we put in escrow, I am not sure what the right amount is. And by the way, North Jersey, we call it McAdam too, Keith. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Anyone else from this side of the room for this ordinance? Say now we're gonna move to this side of the room. Yeah. Uh, 
Hi, Dave Hayes, 641 Battersea. So there's a, a model that I've heard a lot of people talk about, concept, design, and execution. So what we're doing here is we're jumping the gun. So we're talking about executing before we have a concept and a design. Um, we're talking about buying something when we don't have a specific use, and as, as Marie said, that's like going to a bank and saying, I want, it, I want a $9 million loan, but I don't know what I want it for. And the bank would send me packing. And I'm a taxpayer, and I'm the bank, so I, tell me what it's for. Uh, and, and I really think with all the questions that are, that are arising, it'd be a good idea to have a public comment on it, a public uh, 